Hey! Hey! I, yes, hey! I don't know. It's episode 59 of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. Yeah, that's what we do 59 times. We have done this 59 times. 59 times we've waited a while to get into it. Yeah. 59 times we've struggled to remember what song we were going to talk about. (laughs) Yeah, that's Uh, true. 59 59 times we've said, oh, we're almost out of songs. (laughs) <laughs> it seems to never be true. He wrote a lot of damn songs. I feel like it'll have to be true one day. It must. Maybe that'll be. Maybe he's waiting till then to drop the new album. Oh, that <laughs> that'd be fantastic. So <laughs> that means the new album is just uh, just over a year away. That's right. He gives him time to finish it up. Mm-hmm. And that'll be all. He'll on it. Bone bonus will be his re-recording of that French song based on our idea right he's got a couple of re-recordings to do i think yeah well we've given him so many good ideas yeah some good rewrites he's got to get a guest lady singer for that one song yeah for uh tomorrow is is today i think oh yeah tomorrow is today going to the river yeah (laughs) the soul (laughs) part yeah Uh, walter walter's going to the river uh hey stop that come here Come here. <laughs> That's Walter, everybody. And uh, hey, if you have dogs, you know how likely it is that he's going to stop that. Not very, but well, we'll see what happens. The song we picked is, or I picked, is Got to Begin Again. We are working our way through an entire album, which we didn't decide to do. It just kind of happened. It's kind of happened. It also feels like uh we gotta clean up it's the first album yeah like let's go clean this up <laughs> yeah you know when you clean you, you're cleaning your house and you're like well first of all we gotta move all the furniture yep Can't just start vacuuming. yep we did we're, we're moving all the furniture all right you can go out there and yell at somebody all right don't yell at walter everybody Give it up for Walter, everybody. <laughs> I'm just going to have to let my house guest deal with Walter for a few minutes. <laughs> Your house guest also doing a podcast? Because that would be great. Yeah. it's Yeah. Sandy analyzes the way they live. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. She's already on episode 62. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, she didn't. <laughs> we skip a week sometimes. That's right. Yeah. There's a lot she to talk does. about. She's like, I, I, my favorite episode was The Garage. She talked about The Garage uh, for an episode. <laughs> <laughs> we do a fun thing with our garage, which is our cars are in there. Oh, yeah. It's kind of uh, unique. I do a fun thing because we're recording on our laptops, as you can probably tell at home. Your laptop. So once in a while, a little notification will slide in. You know how that happens? Oh, yeah will go hey uh and mine just says uh pills ah just a <laughs> reminder pills nice and are they for the cat or for uh, you oh they're for me nice the cat is still not on anything at uh 20 years old that's pretty impressive yeah we had a 20 year old cat and we had to give her insulin shots interesting and uh, i don't think she minded but she probably didn't enjoy them either yeah i don't know this lucky streak is going to run out i mean obviously yes <laughs> she is mortal yeah like so many of us yeah all, all the people i've known yeah you know most of the people i know hey by the way i like all the marvel movies uh, latest thor not great <laughs> yeah it's i fun. saw it uh it's fine yeah it's fun and cute but i never felt like there were stakes not a one yeah it's like, oh, they'll figure it out <laughs> i feel like they overcorrected because like in ragnarok that was where they took this character that had been kind of dour and shakespearean by choice uh-huh. and said what if he was fun as well yes and they were like, oh, this works. People like that. So then in this one, they're like, what if he's only fun? 
Right. And that's a mistake. And what if everything's silly? Yeah. Except for the villain who's doing a whole other movie. Yeah, and the villain has understandable motivations, is sad. Yeah. It's they kind of nail that, which is weird because it's like there's a couple things they get good. I like Jane Foster. I like the I like that they adapted the cancer thing. Uh-huh. I that's from the comic. I like all of that. It, but it's like all this sort of very serious stuff nestled in between slapstick nonsense. Yeah. And I feel like whoever wrote the script uh, is unfamiliar with the Guardians of the Galaxy somehow. <laughs> None of them sounded like themselves. Ah. They, and they, were, they like showed, they basically one day of filming, I would guess. Yeah. Like, hello, we're the Guardians of the Galaxy. Now we have to leave. Yeah. <laughs> See you Enjoy later. Enjoy the film. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there was probably more with them on the cutting room floor and probably fine that it was, but... Star-Lord said a bunch of non-Star-Lord things. Yeah. yeah. And that's why you tune into the Billy Joel show, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you should hear what they're talking about over on the Marvel podcast. <laughs> right. It's who's, who's really the piano man, they start saying. <laughs> so uh, it's my wife's birthday coming up, by the way. Oh, not even coming up. Today. Today's her birthday. Hey, Wow. And so I uh, surprised her by flying in her best friend to stay with us. Very nice. So that they could just spend time together and not spend time with me. It was part of the gift. Just please enjoy not having to always be around me. And so that's kind of what we're doing today. And then um, I got to read you this thing from Twitter and then we can go. But uh, so this was an E! News headline. Why child actors were warned about Matt Berry on the What We Do in the Shadows set. <laughs> okay. Now, doesn't that sound like Matt Berry is a pedophile or he'll show you his dick or yeah. something? Give you drugs, something like that. Drugs. No, it was somebody's not good at writing headlines because he said in an interview... I got to watch my mouth because there's a bunch of kids and I curse a lot. <laughs> wow. And, and it was him saying he wants to be careful. Right. It wasn't, they didn't have to go behind his back to warn the kids. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's, it's the nature of clickbait, the clickbait universe we all live in now. They so, Yeah, they got it wrong though. That's just so funny. It's not like he's going in there and go. Ah, great. Phone, dog, magic. Uh, it's not like he's like, welcome to the set, you cunts. What, what are you, the youngest cunt on this show? It's not like he's doing that. <laughs> well, probably not. Yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, what, hey what, what are you cunts doing in the shadows? He does not do them, man. <laughs> What do you do in the shadows? You fuck? <laughs> fucking in the shadows? Oh, oh yeah. Kids. Are you too young for that? Yeah, dumb assholes. Anyway, nice to meet you, kids. Sorry, kids. I mean, they're humping. They're humping in the shadows. <laughs> they're making a baby in the shadows. They're making a baby in the shadows. Yeah, they're tickling each other. Stupid kids. <laughs> oh lord that was just funny to me and yeah it's my wife's birthday so i'm trying to be good we got our gluten-free cake did nice. all the things you gotta do when you're old you gotta get a <laughs> get a dessert no one's gonna enjoy yep act like it's oh it's pretty that's kind of tastes like cake <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's convincing yeah that's cake ish yeah, it used to be everything was delicious, and now everything is uh, believable. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. There's a, on my way to work, there's a Dunkin' Donuts near my work, and that makes me mad. <laughs> that can't be that close to me. That's bad. I have to, a Dunkin' Donuts has to be at a location that I have to work for, or there's a problem. That's not good. Um... The building I work in, famously, has a food court 
on the lower level, which includes a Dunkin' Donuts. But to make up for it, they also have a salad place. So guess where I go all the time? I want to say the Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. <laughs> because you climb out of the subway and it's the first thing. Yeah. Like you go through the turnstile and there's a Dunkin' Donuts. And if you want a salad, oh, there's a hallway and you turn and down some stairs and then you have to answer three questions. <laughs> And you have to swim across a little channel <laughs> and you can have a, a salad that doesn't taste good. Yeah, the amazing thing about Dunkin' Donuts, too, is you can fool yourself. You can just go, man, I really need a cup of coffee. So, yes, and you don't, but that's not why you went there. Yeah. The cup of coffee is the way you got away with, I uh, well, you know, and I might as well get a donut while I'm here. Sure, sure. You know? I, I need I need to hit an ATM. Oh, this strip club probably has one. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is great. You know, I've always wanted diabetes. It's always been my goal. You do the thing where you act surprised a little bit that there's donuts. <laughs> I find that I do that. I'm like, let me get a large coffee. I'm like, oh, oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you know, lady. When did <laughs> you see? When you, did, there's a wall of donuts. When did you start selling this? <laughs> huh. One this of my stuff has changed. One of my favorite gigs is at the this uh, Edgewater Casino and Resort uh, thing I, I do every year. It has uh, one of the perks is the hotel where you stay, you get free uh, Dunkin' Donuts oh. every morning. Not just the first day, every morning. Good Lord. Yeah. You got to get out of there. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I go get it every time. Why wouldn't I? What are you going to do? Yeah. What am I going to do? Live longer? No. I'm not going to no. do that. What purpose would that serve? Uh, not any for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we got to begin again. That's the song that I picked. And my goodness, it feels like it would be a good song if you were doing an album where, like an unplugged album, just a strip oh, yeah. down. Uh, and I mean that in a not accidental, but a complimentary way. I like the music of this a lot. It's very nice, again, piano music. Yep. He's very good at that. Yeah. Um, and it does just sound like a pretty song. Nothing extra in it. There's no extras in this. There's no extras, there's no sound effects. No there's helicopters. No <laughs> no middle no middle drums? huh are there drums even i don't i don't think so yeah it's sparse for it's sure sparse. yeah it sounds like a song that you would have heard in the 70s sung by a nice lady <laughs> on one of them uh variety shows they used to have all the time like a janiceean song yeah 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 uh i like it's interesting so to give if you haven't listened to the song, to give you an idea of how sparse it is, as Alex is saying, is there's very little beginning before he starts singing. There's not a lot in the beginning. There's not a middle bridge with a, a big piano break. Nope. It just kind of goes right into it. It's not trying too hard, which is nice. Yeah. And it, I, I would say uh, the flip side of that is it doesn't really land either no 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 you're right i don't think it does and it's like okay you didn't try too hard but you didn't get anywhere either so yeah. all right <laughs> if it, if like janice Ian or someone had done this on a variety show it, it would be a thing where the host afterwards would say oh janice Ian, everybody wasn't that nice <laughs> Yeah, when wow, would, holy shit, Janice Ian, you guys. <laughs> people would lightly applaud. You're absolutely right, and it would yeah. be fine. It'd be fine. Everybody'd be like, "Huh, all right." Yeah, nice. And, and they would have built too much set for it, which I used to like on those shows. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Hey, we're gonna have a lady on at the end of the show. She's gonna sing a song. It's like three minutes long. Oh, uh, build a house. And uh, shrubbery. Yep. We could have like some uh, rabbits and a big sun that comes down. <laughs> <laughs> my, 
It swings back and forth a little bit. Look for the clip. Let me write this down. But the clip of Ode to Billy Joe on, uh, I think it's on the Smothers Brothers. They do exactly that. It's just <laughs> a lot of set. That's great. Also, great song. Just about one of the best songs. Ode to Billy Joe. You remember that one, right? One of the great ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Early song of people debating what what's this secretly about? It was one of those songs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like everybody was like, I think she threw a baby over the bridge. That's what everybody said. <laughs> so like they think that they honestly, apropos of what, what's going on in the news, a lot of people were convinced the song was about an abortion. Oh, interesting. It All wasn't. Right, gotta listen to it again. Yeah, it wasn't. She says, that was, yeah. And then, so that would have been the seventies, right? That was, the uh -huh. 70s. I was saying in the sixties, they were all secretly about jizz. <laughs> yeah. Or at least the band names were all jizz. Right. <laughs> in the seventies. Yeah. It was like a secret murder of some kind. Yeah. The eighties, nobody questioned the eighties. I was like, no, that's what they meant. Because yep. it was all British. It was a lot of British groups. And there was like, oh, that's probably what they mean. Just what yeah. they say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her name's probably Rio and she dances on the sand. Yeah, that's exactly what that song's about. That's what's in the video. Yeah. So she also stands on a boat. Yeah. Which not is a... wise. Wise. If you're on the ocean, I recommend that over just not being on a boat. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yeah. So, uh, got to begin again. It's just the tiniest little song. It is just a snippet of a song. A little it's, wisp of a thing. It's barely a song, but it's nothing wrong with it. Again, it's off of Cold Spring Harbor. For those of you trying to remember what album we're muscling through. We're moving the furniture so we can vacuum. That's right. By the way, the other thing that occurred to me about the cover for Billy Joel, Cold Spring Harbor, is it looks like a bad photocopy like they the album cover itself <laughs> it really does and like it wasn't that long ago no get a decent clear photograph <laughs> it honestly looks like if you bought a copy of cold spring harbor and for my birthday you recorded a tape of it <laughs> because you couldn't afford to buy me nothing and you photocopied the cover just so it would be kind of like i got the album yeah, yeah. So you have all the pieces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and the sound quality would be about the same because really the, the engineering on this song is legendarily shitty. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'll start and I, I'm going to start out small because it's the tiniest little verse before he gets into it. It's a funny, funny how this song is laid out. Well, so here I am at the end of the road. Where do I go from here? I always figured it would be like this. Still, nothing seems to be quite clear. Um, I always figured it would be like this because I know it's Billy Joel. It means terrible. I always figured it would be terrible. <laughs> yeah. Terrible, disappointing. Grim yeah. In nope. some way. There's someone who won't take my awesome advice. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. Um, I, I got a note. Um, he's off to the races with well again. Yep. <laughs> and in this case, it's a well and a so. Yeah, true. Neither of which you need. Yeah, you could easily just say, here I am at the end of the road. Yeah. But how nice is it in a way, because it's Billy Joel, resigned, fed up, somehow an old man from the very beginning <laughs> yep. by the way i think that's one of the reasons i love billy joel because i've always kind of been that too and i yeah. think you have too oh for sure born pretty sure you're born 60. born 60. <laughs> um fluctuated some i feel like i'm the youngest i've ever been yep my current age um but yes definitely like well, you know, he's, I think, 22 when he recorded this album. Yeah. Here I am at the end of the road. <laughs> First album. <laughs> um, also, like, the 
lack of clarity on this, the phrase, here I am at the end of the road, where do I go from here? Yeah. You just said you were, you, <laughs> you were at the end of the road. Oh, here's an observation. Don't go anywhere from there. Yeah. The the road. <laughs> it, it's his first album. Your first album is the end of a road. Oh. It is like the other day I saw, what's her name? Something Tomlin, the comedian. Uh, she's very really? funny. Yeah, I think, no, not Lily Tomlin, but <laughs> no, that's funny. Um, a younger comic, she's new. Um, oh. Anyway, she was talking about having always wanted to be on Conan. And then she got a set on Conan. Uh-huh. And then there's that moment after you have, and I've had that happen to me too. You get into a movie and you think, oh, I'm in a movie. Oh, that don't mean nothing. That's great. <laughs> right. Huh, I thought this meant something. All right. You get a little something on TV, and but it could be any fucking thing. My buddy worked at NASA. I mean, forget about little jobs we've done writing jokes. The dude worked at NASA. Right. And he, he's an engineer. He's like, I'm at NASA. And then years later, he's filling out applications. Right. And it doesn't uh, feel like a guy who worked at NASA should have to feel, fill out applications. No, you should just have your NASA badge with you. Give me a, your job. Yeah, give me any of the jobs that are had. I worked at NASA, but... I mean, unless he was like cleaning NASA. <laughs> <laughs> I assume someone vacuums NASA at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I, I'm like overinflating him. He was like in the commissary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but... Yeah. Yeah, he worked on a, a satellite, a big one that was like taking pictures of Mars and stuff and had a key role. And then some years later, he was working at CVS. <laughs> and now he's back in engineer again because my good friend is not a quitter. He works very hard, but, but I, you know, maybe that's what it is. You get your first album and then not, well, now what the hell am I supposed to do? The, yeah, I was reading today and, and because I am who I am, I didn't read much. Um, <laughs> there's a thing in the world called the arrival fallacy. And it's one of the reasons that uh, most of us are so very unhappy all the time is that we have in our heads this idea that we're going to get somewhere. Oh. Why uh, I think a lot of marriages, people in the marriages are disappointed because they're just like, if I could just meet someone and get married, I will have arrived somewhere. But then they wake up the next day and there's stuff that you got to do. And you're like, oh, I have not arrived anywhere. I am on a different path. Yeah. I know less about this path and shit. Lord. As a starving artist, I knew at least where I was trying to go. You know, now I have yeah. my job at the TV show and I'm like, great. A lot of worries that I don't have anymore, but also like, where am I going exactly? Oh, interesting. Definitely a path. Reading, don't know what to go. You know. Oh, that's interesting. Lord, I had this conversation about some friends of mine. I think I might have mentioned it to you off off air last week. Who. I was just saying they should be Taoists or more people should at least know what Taoism is because so many people are mad that the world's the way it is. Yeah. But it doesn't make the world any different to be mad about it. Nope. Things are just the way, and it's not unjust. It's unjust, I guess, if you truly believe in an omnipotent, omniscient God, and then I'm sorry for you. Because, unfortunately, the world doesn't really fit that model. No. Um, the problem of evil is unresolvable unless you believe that evolution is a process, not exactly random, but not planned. And then right. it all makes sense. Then you're like, oh, I get it. People are bastards because they want to survive and they don't care about your survival. Kindness is the anomaly. Okay. Right. And it's, or, you know, even more cynically, kindness is also a survival strategy. Yeah. 
And then we don't really mean it either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alive. Yeah. Like, oh, I got jokes. Don't kill me. <laughs> I got yeah. jokes. I'm nice to people. My friend Walker is just about one of the finest people you'd meet. He's just a good guy. And he has a friend who's a Republican. And my friend Walker is a liberal. And But my friend has just decided to accept that sometimes there's going to be times you just live with the fact that your friend has an, a view that you can't really you can't really accept but also you can accept that it's theirs and he said and as a favor to his friend he said okay i'll do it. you know i'm gonna do a favor since i'm i'm visiting i'll sit down and watch tucker carlson with you <laughs> and walker goes oh, i couldn't stop laughing <laughs> <laughs> And it's just, everybody has these worldviews that are built on sand, but they all are. They all are. Just different sand. Yeah. And just the key is to be aware that it's sand, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. At least the key to, like, empathy. Yeah. That everybody else, everybody's on the same stupid journey, which is just different speeds towards the same end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot in that first uh, stanza. There kind of is, actually. And uh, Now, we always ask this question, does he mean for there to be a lot or not? Because I, I never, I'm sure. But I like this. I feel like he's always striving for a little more meaning than he pulls off. That's my guess. Yeah. Um, I can't think of a song offhand where he really nails what he's going for so maybe a big shot sees yeah and scenes from an italian restaurant sure um because that one's just a nice story and it fully intended and yeah oh yeah but big shot for sure which is just hey i heard a story about from a friend of mine that his wife is a nut <laughs> <laughs> um all right you're up all right all the words have been spoken and the prophecy fulfilled but I just can't decide where to go. Yes, it's been quite a day, and I should go to sleep. But tomorrow, I will wake up, and I'll know. Better go to begin again. The words have been spoken, and the prophecy fulfilled. Yeah. Maybe a little grandiose if he's talking about his struggling music career. The prophecy has been fulfilled. <laughs> Behold, Cold Spring Harbor. <laughs> I wonder if the prophecy is that uh, self-motivating thing, like I'm going to get my record deal, and you know, right. if it, does it? Ref yeah, rather than his words per se, not his lyrics, but his speaking into the universe what he wants. Yeah. But yeah, it's grandiose as all fuck. <laughs> we call it a prophecy. It's a lot. Yeah. Goal. Like the goal has been achieved. Yeah. That's not very lyrical. <laughs> yeah. Um, I is it self-effacing? Is he? Is it self-aware? I don't know. I well, doubt it. At twenty-two. Probably not. Yeah. yeah. And he's probably. I think at this point in his career. He's a really good piano player who has to have lyrics. Yeah. Later, he's like, oh, I'm in a position of power. I have a responsibility to be interesting and or tell people what to think. Yeah. <laughs> Without advice. But I think at this point, he's like, oh, I'm not great with words. Yeah. Um, so it's good that we're examining his lyrics so carefully. Um, they are probably never intended for this. Yeah, uh, that's true. I, uh, is that same sentiment where it's like, all right, I'm here where I wanted to be, and now I don't know where to go. Let's see, by the way, are there any comments in the... No, no comments. I was just curious. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Um, but I, I like... I can't decide where to go because reiterating this thing that, like, here I am. I got the thing, but yeah. 
And, but tomorrow I will wake up and I'll know that I've got to begin again. Now I, it is kind of coming clear because what you've got to do is you did the thing today, but if you don't do it again tomorrow, then right. it all disappears. I watched a video yesterday from a physicist on the second law of thermodynamics. I was just doing it for fun, just something to watch. And it really is true. You know, musician, you put out an album, you're like, I did it. But if you don't do it again, yeah. you might as well have not done it as far as people are concerned, because it all kind of uh, fades away. Right. Yeah. That's another ascent. It reminds me of the song, The Entertainer. Not the other one, the Billy Joel one. Right. Where he says, hey, yeah, I'm a big rock star now, but I got to fucking keep doing it. Or I'm going to be in the discount rack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ben Folds 5, I know. They're one of those groups that dealt with just like, they're one of those groups that was like, had to choose between doing exactly what they did before because that's what people wanted to hear. And then having people go, ah, this is just the same. Or doing something different and people going, ah, this isn't the same. <laughs> right. Because people are jerks, and so you just kind of got to keep dancing. Yeah. Um, good problems to have, so it's always hard to hear a rock star bitch about anything. But still, it's True. it's it's valid. I think it take, takes him much longer in his career to get to the idea of good problems to have. Yeah. Um, every problem he has in these early songs is enormous. Yeah. And crushing in some way and unfair it's just unfair that i gotta make a second album <laughs> uh tomorrow i will wake up and i'll know that i've got to begin again again though i don't know how to start yes i've got to begin again and it's hard i like the i, I like though i don't know how to start that yeah. seems very brutally honest yes and it's a recognizable feeling yeah um, we've had in our careers, I'm sure you've had, you know, a stand up set where you murder and, you know, at a place that you go frequently, you know, like, ah, oh, great. But now yeah. I can't do that again because I got to come back here next week and a lot of these same people will be here. Yeah. We need new stuff. You always need new stuff. Yeah. You're always writing new jokes. And I know I, we've talked about this for sure. It's like, I'll write a new joke. And I so often when I write a new joke, I go, oh, this is the one. <laughs> <laughs> right. And of course, right. and sometimes, listen, sometimes they're justified in the sense that they're such lovely jokes. Like I just wrote a new one that I'm very happy with. And mm -hmm. now I think I have a little more perspective. Like, well, yes, this it's good that you wrote that because you need that for your act. And also it's good that you like it because you sure should... Sure, sugar should be able to enjoy doing it. Right. But none of them are the one. Yeah. I They're all. It, um, I think it's very mentally healthy. And I think that was the thrust of the article that I read part of. <laughs> to, uh, you know, do away with the idea of having arrived anywhere or trying to arrive anywhere. Yeah. Um, you're just going. You're just going. Yeah. You write a great joke or you have a great set you're like hey i'm going great yeah i did a bit one of my favorite bits i i i went um before i the thing i would like to say to you is that it's not the journey it's the destination I, and this is a bit i used to do i go it's not the journey it's the destination although if we're being honest it's important to pack so it's really not the destination it's packing it's getting ready mm -hmm. it's getting ready but you know what though you're gonna have to let people know you're going actually it's, so it's not packing it's letting people know that you're leaving that's what's important it's not the journey it's not the destination it's not packing it's letting people know you're leaving but you know what let's be honest you're gonna need money because you're good, you're leaving. It's earning the money, and then it all goes and goes, and eventually I go. Well, the point is, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> that was ultimately the point. What I'm trying to say is, whatever you're trying to do, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> well, 
And you know what I thought about that joke at the time? This is the one. That's the one. I'm, I'm there now. I've made it. I'm famous. <laughs> the irony that your joke about a destination. <laughs> yeah. This is the one that, uh... Uh, yeah. Well, here he goes, by the way. Well, oh. well, it's been quite a while since I lifted my head, and I'm sure the light will hurt my eyes. I really like that lyric. I see the way that I've been spending my days and reality has caught me by surprise. That's a great line. Yeah. Good verse. I was dreaming of tomorrow, so I sacrificed today. Ah, lovely. I, I'm going to put a break there because the way it's written is it wants me to read the whole thing, but I feel like that's a lot. Yeah, I'll good. let you read the next part, but that's nice. That's my, yeah, that's somehow better writing. It's, uh, yeah. So don't tell. It's been quite a while. It's, he didn't say like, it's been quite a while since I stopped working and looked around. Yeah. Like, I like since I lifted my head. It's a great image of somebody who's been working very hard or focused on a very specific thing and has not noticed the world around them. Yeah. Uh, and very evocative of a guy constantly playing the piano. Yes. You know, or hunched over a desk or something. And wonderful trick. The second line, and I'm sure the light will hurt my eyes, is not extra information. It, it's just reiterating the point from the first line, but in a different enough way to just yeah. bring it home. So it doesn't feel repetitive. It's more like, you know, just letting you know that, you know, I've been working hard and I haven't really even been looking at my life. Yeah. That's really good. And when I do look at my life, it's going to hurt a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I see the way that I've been spending my days and reality has caught me by surprise. I love that lyric. I love the lyric because I think we've all done that where suddenly you looked around and you went, Whatever it was, you're like, damn, I've been drinking too much, or, right, you know, I'm, yeah, I, I haven't been home much. Yeah, I spent yeah. twelve hours here. What did I, what did I even do today, at my job, at my home, wherever, in this relationship? You could apply it to so many things. I think every single day of my life, it gets to be ten o'clock, and I'm like, Jesus, it's ten. I <laughs> to do x y and z today i only did half of x yeah Not about z entirely i guess i'll do z tomorrow yeah every day is a little reckoning and at the same time like i was fucking busy all day though yeah um that's you know a thing sue has been uh i don't want to say complaining noticing about herself she is not working yeah been working for a while and yet every day she's like, how is it 10 o'clock? I did a million things today. <laughs> Didn't look up. And she does. She does a million things. And she's, I think she's overwhelmed by the feeling that they didn't add up to anything. Yup. I have to say like, no, you did this and that and you got this paperwork done and you booked the trip and you killed it. Yeah. I don't feel like I got anywhere. Didn't arrive anywhere. <laughs> but you got a lot done. You got your cruising down the path. Back to that article you read that you nearly read. <laughs> it seems like I should read the article. Yeah, it seems like a good article. You read it, by the way, it's exactly the opposite. It's like, make a point of getting somewhere. Ah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, based on the early part of the article, I was like, well, I don't have to finish this. <laughs> According to this article, I can't finish this. That's right. I'll never arrive at the end of the article. And if you do, you won't be happy with it. Yeah, so just be, just be other articles. Yeah, just be glad you were reading. Yeah. I was said. dreaming of tomorrow, so I sacrificed today. Also, here's what I'll say for sure about this little piece of the lyric. There's no confusion about what he's talking about. Yeah. I was putting in so much work for this dream. I was on the road. I was becoming a better piano player. I was doing every gig I could do. I was right. hustling. I was talking to this producer and that producer. And in exchange, 
my marriage isn't going great or I didn't have time for myself or I ignored the fact that I've, in addition, kind of picked up a drinking habit or whatever. Or oh, whatever. Yeah. I haven't called any of my friends. Yeah. People seem to be mad at me. Um, my plant died. Whatever. <laughs> I'm projecting a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a perfect little lyric. Wow. Yeah. It's nice. That's funny when we see that because um, yeah, sometimes it's not that. But it's nice <laughs> when it is. Yeah. It's weird. He does this a lot, by the way. We, uh, As we've looked at different songs there'll be songs where like so much of the lyrics are just like there's this weird phrase and why is that phrase there and what's this and then right in the middle of it there's just this perfect phrase yeah and he's not a good enough writer to know where those are i think is it that for sure it's that too i bet you too every now and then that was the first phrase that made you think there could be a song because i that all happened to me where the best part is this neat little thing I thought of. Right. And you write around it, hoping that everything else will be as good as that. And a yeah. lot of times it isn't. True. Or, you know, I think of it as like you're writing a bit or a piece or a sketch or something, and it's going along fine. And then you have this great joke. And you're like, oh, this is what it is. It's this. Okay, go back and fix the other shit. Yeah. Make it go with that. Yeah. Uh, which is a, a, a level of awareness that you don't have at 22. You're just happy you got some. Yeah. That's the, the thing you needed. Yeah. So One... me, we're off the air to tell you a joke I thought of. You want to tell me now or off the air? A little blue. Okay, it's up to you. We could, you know. That's um, true. Do you want to share it with the audience or just later? Well, I was yeah. thinking about, I'll tell you now. Okay. <laughs> um, it's stand up -y and I'm not a stand up, so forgive me if I clutch. <laughs> um, but I, I went and got some Cialis the other day. Um, I was thinking, the great thing about Cialis, you know, it gives you the boner you had when you were 20, right? Yeah. Oh, shit. The erection I had when I was 20, it's smooth and sleek. Just like the old days, but the thing of it is, visually, Cialis doesn't do anything for your balls. <laughs> so it's a weird incongruity <laughs> to look at. It's like an action movie where the grizzled old cop has to train the hot, new young hotshot. <laughs> it's like that idea. Like, yeah, wait, let's go in. Let's break into the warehouse. And I'm like, no, no. We'll just hang back. Take it easy. So the grizzled old cop is the balls. Yeah. So that's pretty funny. I'm getting there. And if I were workshopping it, what's that stuff women put in their eyebrows? Uh, or their, their wrinkles up here? The, the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that... The joke part of the joke could be so now I've, i'm also botoxing my balls botoxing my balls because <laughs> i want them to work well together yeah exactly i want them to look right um and now of course my balls don't look young they just always look surprised <laughs> there you go there you go you finished it you're ready to go on the road i'm your writer now you're gonna come out and do that one bit. yeah <laughs> <laughs> then uh, you'll go Alex Pays, everybody. Wasn't that nice? <laughs> oh, hilarious. My friend Tom does that all the time. He'll go, if I did stand up, here's the bit I thought of. <laughs> and, I'm, and I've said to him many times, you know, you probably could do stand up. And he always goes, yeah, but I don't want to. I was like, all right. <laughs> Sometimes it is fun to just uh, have the bits. Yeah. For him, it's funny because I, I do think he'd be a great stand up because he's got the right personality of enjoying talking but not enjoying talking with people got it yeah how so many comics are like that you've described like well many people have described jimmy fallon that way that he likes conversation as long as he's talking uh -huh. yeah so yeah. many comics are like that people have trouble taking it in yeah 
I often said that. I'm like, I like stand-up because it's a perfect conversation. I've said a bunch of things. You haven't said anything. You liked things I said. Yep. And then back when I was done talking, you didn't jump in. I left. Yeah, you clapped. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, it, you're up. All right. The way mine is broken up, this verse starts with, I was dreaming of tomorrow. Oh, okay. I was dreaming of tomorrow, so I sacrificed today. I like it. And it sure was a grand waste of time. Thrown in my face, I just can't get you out of my mind. This happened to us last week or two weeks ago, where deep into the song, a lady shows up. Yeah. <laughs> this was all about a lady? Yeah. And it, it's not, I don't later songs he would just early on be like oh debbie here's the way i feel about you and you go oh, okay this is talking to debbie yeah and if he mentions work which he does in the other songs he makes it make sense like oh debbie i've been thinking about you but i've been struggling so hard at work <laughs> <laughs> right so Good like, that great song <laughs> yeah <laughs> we all like that debbie song I got us that weird trivia question. That was his biggest hit. Right. That, that Debbie song is the one. It's still number three in Japan. That's right. That is why they have always caught Billy Joel's other nickname is Little Debbie. <laughs> Little Debbie. They don't get a lot of songs in Japan. No, they don't. Was, they, they put out a top seven every yeah, week. They got that song, and for some reason, they really liked the French song. Weird culture. <laughs> Not judging. Yeah. But they have tiny apartments. That's right. Tiny efficient and they like tiny efficient songs that have not very many lyrics. Hold up into the wall. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was dreaming of tomorrow, so I sacrificed today. Great. And it sure was a grand waste of time. Well, I don't know, bud. Yeah. This whole time I thought you were talking about your career, so I'd have to disagree with you. Yes. I know you're talking about Debbie. Maybe it was a grand waste of time. Yeah. Maybe you ignored her in real life the way you ignored her for three quarters of a song. Right? I wonder why this did, didn't work out because I didn't notice you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm talking about work. Despite all the truth that's been thrown in my face, I just can't get you out of my mind. Try that. You, you tried that with women where you just walk up to them and start talking about work for a long time. <laughs> and then you uh, mentioned them. Yeah, I'm sure I have. I no, I have. They don't care for it. No. They, they like to be included. <laughs> well, so now they live in a different city. Oh, dude. <laughs> Yeah, they like that knows it. Yeah, listening is cool. Yeah. That uh, it's funny too, just because you he really wasn't talking about any lady. Yeah. Now it's also a possibility that he's working on uh, multiple tracks here. Yeah. Um, I worked so hard on my little career. Now uh, I'm at the end of the road, and I got to begin again. Also and separately. I've been chasing this girl, going down that road, and we've got to the end of that road, and oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Got to begin again. So this is early song, yeah, early songwriting Billy Joel. The trick here, a better trick then would be, the character within the song has the girl, and yeah. he's dissatisfied. Then that, because then that would make perfect sense. You'd be like, here we are. I have the lady where I guess we're happy, but I know tomorrow I'll just have to begin again and try to do this. And that would make sense, except that it isn't that. It's now, now it's unrequited love, which is not what we were talking about. No. Unrequited love is not much of a road. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's just sort of a fact of life and there's yeah. not much to do about it there's things you can try like writing a weird song but doesn't generally get you anywhere yeah so yeah so this would be early songwriting still finding your voice so which is kind of great actually it just really does feel like this is a great album for a billy joel fan to yeah. look at this yeah. is like if you were hey you've never heard billy joel before ah cold spring harbor you're never going to want to hear him again here you go <laughs> yep you don't want to do that but oh you like billy joel well listen to this because this is all his early stuff where he's just figuring it out the piano's beautiful the lyrics get a little wonky but there's gems in there yeah, there's gems there's flashes of what happens later yeah happiness is there <laughs> yeah he uh has a mustache for some reason and later on he figures out that that don't work nope maybe in cold spring harbor that flies yeah <laughs> A real place that I've not been to, and nothing about that album cover makes me want to go there. No, it seems really grainy. <laughs> a grainy place to be. Yeah, that's like the the other thing that that shot could be is like the only picture we have of the potential murderer. <laughs> right. Anyway. <laughs> This is the, she had a camera and it was on the beach and this is the picture that's in the camera. That's all we know. One <laughs> shoe, we found one shoe. <laughs> By the way, are you caught up on Better Call Saul? Speaking of shoes. I love it. Unpleasant. <laughs> Unpleasant. So but good. So good. So great. Um, yeah. Do we, as long as we're tangenting, you ever read Alan Stephenwall, the TV critic? No. He is uh, prolific, um, and he posts his review of each episode of Better Call Saul five minutes after it ends on TV. Wow. Well, he of course have, gets them in advance, um, so, but he doesn't post them ahead of time, and he doesn't wait three days. They go on the internet <laughs> as soon as the episode is over. And then you can read, and he has a million observations and Easter eggs, and he follows all the threads very carefully of the character development. Uh, it's very interesting. He's great. That's fantastic. Oh, other slight tangent, because I just remembered. Last week, you mentioned one of your favorite writers, and we were talking about him uh, reading stuff that he didn't mean to have published, like the okay. stuff. Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut. I, re I happened to watch that episode as I'm posting it. And you said something very funny that I didn't catch in the moment. You said, Kurt Vonnegut, and then you go, the writer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the writer. Okay. Not the pitcher for the Phillies. Right. Common uh, mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Just listening to it in context, it made me laugh. And I was like, oh, that's... Very funny. Oh, they're, uh, they're going to be confused about which curve on again because there's so many. It's, you know, the pitcher, the the writer, the 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 NASA guy Jim was talking about earlier. The guy who runs Vonnegut's diner. Yeah. They're my favorite diner. <laughs> it's just very funny. Yeah, this, uh, this, there's, this is a sparse song. I mean, look at that. There's not a lot of lyrics, but something is said, which is nice. Something is said. And maybe, despite maybe little fiddling around, I, I wouldn't want it any longer, really. No, there's not, unless he's got a third path that isn't going well, but there, it isn't musically interesting enough to stay alive. No. He was going to throw in, uh, you know, oh, Lord, going to the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jacked up bridge. <laughs> I think you only get one jacked up bridge per album. Uh, that should be his next album, the jacked up bridge. And it's, you know, and, it, and on the, it's a picture of like a gloomy, just foreboding. And there's a bridge falling down and he's trying to walk across it. And, <laughs> and But the point of the album is just, yeah, none of the bridges on this make sense. And that was the point. Good point. Sorry. 
Well, yeah, I, I don't dislike the song. I will say that. I just don't. It's a nice little song. I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to it necessarily. No. But I don't mind hearing it. That's what the most I'll say for it is I don't mind hearing it. It's fine. It's pretty. I think it's funny that it's called Got to Begin Again rather than I've Got to Begin Again or something. Yeah. It makes it sound like a soul song or an R&B song. Yeah. Based on the title. And that's very Billy Joel. The stuff he likes, the stuff that influenced him. You're right. Absolutely. And even though it doesn't show up musically, you're right. It does title wise. It shows up musically. It's musically. It's not aping anything. I don't think musically. It's just a nice little piano piece. I think it was probably a nice little piano piece for a long time before it had words. Yeah. Do it. I don't know. What I want to know is when he was playing in piano bars under his name, Bill Martin, uh, Long Island or wherever, and I'm sure in Oyster Bay, was he like the background guy who just played music while people uh, clinked their uh, plates and glasses? Or did he sing words? Oh, yeah. Or did he mix up? Did it depend? Like if he was in, oh, he's going to be in the lobby at the Radisson. Yeah. Sing songs with words. And then sometimes they're like, just play music. So it sounds like a nice restaurant. That's um, funny. Yeah, that's a good question. I, uh, I know, I know so many piano players. I think you know this about me because I'm my wife. I know so many pan piano players and I know both kinds. <laughs> and I would guess that Billy Joel was the kind who sang because right. the guys I know who sing and play, it isn't always because they have a great voice. Many right. times they don't, but most of the time it's because they're very good piano players and they're very outgoing human beings True. and yes. they need to be heard. And so <laughs> this isn't enough. Yeah. And, and a lot I, of probably those talk singers. Yeah, absolutely. Like I know this guy, Jeffrey Lee Tozer and he did for a long time, and now he does stand-up, which I'm sorry to say he's doing stand-up. And not because stand-up's not great, but I'm like, you could play piano. Yeah, you don't Do need that. <sighs> stand-up is great, but you have a thing that's marketable and is also entertainment. Yeah, stand-up is for people who can't play instruments. Yeah. Yeah, we're... <sighs> yeah. Like, I never advise somebody to go into stand up. People, you just end up in it, and that's fine. Are you enjoying watching it get darker and darker over here? Oh, in your apartment? What's going on, by the way? Huh? Why is it getting darker? Is it just because of outside? Just because the sun's going down, yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, I hope you folks at home are enjoying that too. A little, little Easter egg. So if you watch this, watch this the normal way first, but then watch it on fast forward. <laughs> that's really yeah well now we should i want then we honestly probably should do an incredibly long episode till it's absolutely dark <laughs> so it's a nine hour episode it's like one of those fireplace videos just keeps going and going it started like right before sun up oh yeah well then that's when we talk about we didn't start the fire oh yeah <laughs> we'll need it and we go in and we go into way too much analysis of each thing. What do they mean by what does he mean by cola wars? What is he referencing? All right. Harry Truman. Who president. was he was a president. Apparently the S didn't stand for anything. He just put it in there because it sounded uh fancier. Is that true? That's what I've heard. Oh, that's fantastic. Not sure if that's true. This is my new thing now is when I tell someone I heard this, I follow it up with, I don't know if it's true. That's good. That's very yeah. responsible. Uh, don't. Yeah. That's yeah. a very responsible. I've also been caught out more than once. <laughs> oh, well, I heard it from Dave. So we'll yell at Dave. I talk about evolution a lot because I'm interested in it. And I know quite a lot more than a regular person would know because I've read a lot. Every now and then I'll be somewhere where I end up not knowing that I'm talking to like a biologist or something. 
And then they'll go, well, actually, and they'll explain something. And I'll go, ah, that's incredible. And they'll go, yeah, but you were close, they'll say. <laughs> and I feel like if I was close, that's pretty good for somebody who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. Right, thank you. I do that with my doctor friends all the time. <laughs> Be like, oh, this guy came in with uh, this problem, and I'll go, oh, and did you uh, put a shunt in his ureter? And they'll go, well, we would have if it was more severe, but we just uh, gave him an IV. But yeah, no, that's a thing you might do. <laughs> All right. Well, at probably. least, at least you were in the you're in the wrong you're in the right body part. Yeah. You're yeah, you're of course a little credit. Yeah, absolutely. You're definitely going like house level seriousness where they're like, this was just a regular guy. Yeah, almost everybody who comes in, we just give them an IV and they, and they go home. Yeah, there's a lot of ibuprofen that goes through our office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be <laughs> funny that that's most of your day as a doctor. And you know, the very serious days, they don't enjoy those. Oh, you know, I'll bet. Those aren't good days. I'll, I'll be willing to bet, too. Um, although I went to see my doctor the other day just for, a, you know, a handful of questions, follow-ups and stuff like that. And I walked in to his office and I was like, hey, how's it going? You must be super busy. And he said, no, I'm bored to death. <laughs> well, what's happening? Oh, what's that's great. Happening? Nothing's happening. Nobody's, uh, all my patients are doing well. <laughs> I was like, okay. Oh, that's good. Good. I, yeah, that's nice, Doc. You want that. Yeah, you want that. You want to be bored by that, right? It is very funny, by the way, how I'm crystal clear in the image and you're just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, but do, would you like to know what I do in the shadows? That's right, which is don't tell the kids. <laughs> oh, we're a bunch of cunts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, look at that. Look at speaking of kids. Oh, look at that. That's a, a teddy bear with the insides a little bit ripped out. Yep. Kind of a sad old teddy bear. Yeah. He, he does seem, he, he was sad before, by the way, because his expression, I'll tell you something about teddy bears, a little inside information. That's a set facial exper expression. It didn't just happen because of the insides. <laughs> okay. Because it does look like a... Uh... There's a causation. Yeah, just inside, inside, inside baseball about teddy bears. That's not important to the clue, but yeah, um, he is, he is, yeah, his stuffing is coming out, out from where? Um, it is it looks like his chest. Indeed, and or also it looks like that might even be. I'm pointing at it. Uh, right. where he's where he's put together. Ah, oh, is uh, split down the middle. You know, his seam is coming apart at the seams. That's right. The song is. Uh, I go to extreme. You nailed it, sir. You Woo. nailed it. That's it. Dave should be very happy with that outcome. I am tired of living my life for Dave. <laughs> but I hope he's happy. Indeed. He's a good dude, by the way. He's yeah. a good oh, dude. Yeah, no, I'm pro Dave. He's just very picky about the clue part of the show. <laughs> it's very funny how dark it is in here. Yes. Uh, it oh, really... God. Ah! <laughs> uh, I was going to say, oh, I was looking at BillyJoel.com, uh, and there are comments under uh, Second Wind on oh. BillyJoel.com. And there are a lot. It's very sweet. It's a lot of thank you. Oh, that's nice. That, for those of you who don't remember, that's the suicide song. Right. Or at least the video. And the lyrics. Yeah. Okay. It's all there. Yeah. We, we, we broke it down one time. It's there. It's not, it's not, oh, it's not morose. It's not like you right. got a gun in your mouth and you like to taste a lead. Boop, boop, boop. It's not that. Ah. But it's very clear that he's you're talking about a guy who's giving up yes and they drive it home in the video of course in the, the video is way over the top where he's dressed like the hamburglar yeah and he's got a magical harmonica yeah that's right <laughs> uh and in that one it's the magical har harmonica do you remember what song he plays oh fuck 
That's an easy one, by the way, on the harmonica. Uh, uh, Ballad of Billy the Kid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit of Piano Man. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Because he's the Piano Man who apparently sings in clubs, but also shows up to avert suicides. <laughs> a la Dr. Sam Beckett. Now he's like a little... Sam Beckett, but it's Billy Joel. I would watch that show. Reboot Quantum Leap with Billy Joel. Hell yeah. He'd do it. He shows up and every single time they're like, you're supposed to be a lady. Why are you kind of a fat old man? <laughs> oh boy. No time. A lot of that. <laughs> yep. Uh, you, you got some trivia for me, mister? I, got, I do. And I, you know, I was like, should I do evolution trivia? But it's too easy. So, uh, the Billy Joel trivia. You remember he famously did concerts in uh, the Soviet Union. Indeed. And at one point uh, got very angry because they were lighting the audience. He flipped over his keyboard. Remember this whole thing? He went nuts. Yep. Um, what song was he in the middle of? Oh, okay. Um, still rock and roll to me. Close, but no. Uh, big shot. <laughs> no. Um, I only wish. <laughs> that, to be, that would actually, yeah, you're right. That would have been great. Um, not still rock and roll to me. Um, you may be right. I may be crazy. It just might be a lunatic. That one? Not that one. No. Same album. You're on the album. Whew, God. Yes. All right. Um... Piano man. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes a fantasy. Sometimes a fantasy. Okay. Yeah, that's a great video. And do you think, by the way, that happened because whoever he was yelling at didn't speak English? <laughs> Very good chance of that. Right? Yeah. Um, it feels like it wasn't the first time it happened in that concert. Yeah. I think they were... Uh, you know, I don't think they didn't. Obviously, they didn't know how to do concerts. Yeah. They're like, hey, we need this place lit. Like, yeah. Great. We'll light everything. You know what I'll say about, but in Russia, piano flips you over. <laughs> ah, I'm so sinister laughing in darkness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what's great, by the way? Come closer, by the way. I want to and introduce our special guest, Michael Gross from Family Ties. <laughs> <laughs> the dad from Family Ties, everybody. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm in a lot of Law and Orders as well. <laughs> That's right. How was that? I'm a great host. <laughs> Uh, right, Jimmy. Oh, yeah, I loved you. Law and Orders, I loved you on that. I saw... You didn't see all of those. You can't have seen everything, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, you work a lot. I like that you like... Look, nobody has seen all the things. Don't... Rude. They can't all be your favorite thing. Yep. I legit don't mind that he does that. You've got to be a good host. Your Seth does that. He's glad that you showed up. But he yep. doesn't pretend everything's his favorite. And he also doesn't pretend he's seen everything. Because you haven't. I love, by the way, Dave Dave Letterman was notorious for letting you know he didn't see your oh. movie. <laughs> yes. Or that he wasn't gonna. Yep, he had no intention. He, I remember, I don't remember who the guest was, but one time, he probably did this more than once, he said, I was going to watch your, they didn't, they didn't send me a copy of your movie. <laughs> Making it clear. I'm not gonna go see your movie. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Why would I do that? If it was if it was Drew Barrymore, he went and saw that movie because they're friends. Oh yeah. By the way, do you watch her show ever? I never have. You should watch it once, just for how lovely and charming she is. It's not great because that's not what she was meant to do. Right. But she was meant to be lovely. Yeah. And it's it's That's lovely. Her. Huh? 
always adored her. Yeah. Yet don't feel compelled to watch the show. But I yeah. will check it out on your word. A single episode is all you need, and it doesn't... Because you're not going to get anything from any other episode that you won't get from the one. But what you will get is you'll go, that's nice that she exists. I'm glad there's someone like her in the world. Yeah. More I like just, yeah, she's just a lovely person. I like her. All right. Yeah. And I don't even want to meet her. I really don't. Because why would I do that to her? <laughs> that's how I feel about it. people. You know, whenever we have famous people on our show, which is a lot. Yeah. Friends will be like, oh, hey, did you did you talk to Tom Hanks? Did you? Like, he doesn't need that. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing in it for him. <laughs> really, all that's in it for me is I can tell you. Yeah. I'm not going to learn anything more about Tom Hanks from meeting him. Did you see my dumb joke about Tom Hanks and Elvis? Did you see my dumb joke? I don't think I did. Because uh, people are complaining about the makeup. They're saying the makeup's really bad. And my joke was, I go, I got to say, the makeup is terrible. He looks nothing like Elvis. <laughs> Perfect. Love jokes. I love jokes. I really do. I really, really do. They're the thing that makes it bearable. It really yeah. does. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of stuff is sad and jokes are nice. It's always nice. Yeah. Hey, you know what I think is neat? You get to pick the song for episode 60. Hey, pretty good. That's a that's a feather in your cap. You put that on the resume. <laughs> well, I'll tell Tom Hanks next time he's on. <laughs> uh, now that now there's something in it for him. At <laughs> long last. This is my <laughs> Um we talked a lot about how there was no lady's name mentioned in this song, so we're going to fix that next week. Why, Judy? Why? <laughs> nice. Why? Why? Why, Judy? Don't just wonder what this song's about. Yeah. Why, why Judy? Why? Ah, fantastic. Uh, before you uh, stop the recording, I would yeah. like if I could just have the last word this time. I'd like to do it. You do it. Stop. Okay. La 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 la. 